Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. One thing we got to do a better job of in 2024 is making sure we say at the top of the episode, make sure that you are subscribed on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, subscribe to Bustin' with the Boys. If you're brand new, welcome to tuning in with us. We have a lot of fun. We bring the locker room to life. If you've been with us the whole time, day one for a month, two months, a year, two years, doesn't matter. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate your support. This episode specifically, number one, shout out to all the Michigan fans out there. Congratulations to you guys. Taylor and I, we unpack a lot of stuff. It's a little bit of a therapy session for the boys, but due to my lack of support throughout the year, we also talk about uh, the, uh, we also talk about the NFL playoffs. We talk about a lot of different things, but subscribe, enjoy the episode. And as always, big hugs, tiny kisses. Hanging with the fellas, betting on a game. No woman's going to tell us what to do. And I've been over here just drinking beer and making that. Bussin' with the boys. Bro. There you go. There it is. We can break all that down later because it's January 9th, 2024. If you're watching this, this is the day after. Well, no, this is coming out tonight. Yeah, day after. University of Michigan is 2024 national champions. Absolutely incredible. If you were gracious enough to join us on the stream yesterday on the YouTube channel, we had all the boys in there. The boy got banged up. He became very useless after the third quarter, I would say. Maybe like halfway through the third quarter. Boys are having a blast in the chat. Coop's in the corner getting excited. Coop, by the way, our new addition, we'll, we'll introduce him in a second. But brother, the feeling of winning a national championship, there's no one else in here other than Garrett that's really felt this. And I was thinking about Coop, it last... Hey, Coop, now hang on. He might have went to Oklahoma State. He might be an Oklahoma State Cowboy, but apparently he's a Michigan fan. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. But I'm saying no one has felt this in the past. Excuse me. I can't imagine. Mitch, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Do that. You're not Ohio State. Like, the feeling I, I got last did. night, the feeling I got last night was so weird because I was like, obviously so stoked the boys won. But in my head, I'm like, I didn't do shit other than just get excited for the boys over and over again. But the feeling is such a unique one compared to playing any football game or anything like that. I can't imagine feeling like that, what, seven times in 12 years? Here we go. He said, yeah, I mean, it's fun. You did a lot of work on your own, too. You fought hard. That's, why, that's why. Now you see why we say we. Yeah, no, I listen. get it now. There's been a lot of, like, uh, I don't know if the word is revelations or uh, epiphanies. Yeah, growth. Growth. But I have truly, like, had to dive headfirst into being a fan this year. And we had this conversation, Jackie, at uh, LSU Florida. And you were growing. You were coming. You and I were going opposite ways. I was getting more passionate, and you were learning how to not let life take you by the balls every time the balls went downhill. Both growth in different different areas, trying to find a little bit of balance. But it is interesting because I did say in the past, you wear a jersey. I sold Chris D'Elia's bit. You wear a jersey, you get to get fucked by that guy. Don't believe that anymore. I used to think like, this is crazy that we say we when you don't play on the team. Now I get it. We won a national championship. It's like, it's like the tribal mentality of being a part of something, even though you're not directly playing in the game or directly doing anything. It's beautiful, and I didn't understand it. And I am so fired up about this. So I just, it just fires me up, man. I don't know what else to say. The game was dominant. Did, at what point in the game did it start to sink in that you were about to be a national champion? I don't know. Because it was, it was difficult for me to really soak it in. Because I'm sitting there and trying to enjoy the win, and I have my literal best friend in the corner going, Come on, Huskies. Damn, you got to convert on that. Damn, what are we doing? And I'm just, like, you, you, you set out to break me down, and it was almost working. It, like, it was truly I almost working. I don't think I was ever in a real position last night to, to navigate that. I think it, like, when, I when it was 17 I was even commenting on good defensive plays by Michigan. Yeah, but, but yeah, it, I definitely wanted it to be just a remotely better game. Than you, what wanted, you wanted the Huskies to win, and when the Huskies sure. would make a play, you're like, oh, I love 4-2. And then five would make a play, but that's a really good defensive play. Yeah, that's a good play. Like more of like an objectively speaking about it, which did, I'll, t I'll be honest, it did kind of, it nicked me a couple times. But all that being said, like when we, when they were marching down, because I think it was a, just a, a two-score game, but there was like eight minutes left, right? 
they started marching down and Zero had that pick, it was like, there's no coming back from this. There's, it was, yeah. And there were so many opportunities that the Huskies had, like 73 might be on suicide watch right now. Their right tackle. He had a, he had a tough game. He had a tough uh, game. I would, yeah, it would suck to. He had a massive, he had multiple false starts, a massive holding call that took away an X play. When they were literally in the game, it was 17 10 at that point. Yeah. And they could have gone and capitalized. But watching Michigan, and we can get, we'll definitely get into the allegations. We'll definitely get into what's probably going to happen this offseason. We can have a little fun with that. But the culture of that team, and I said it last week after Alabama, is so beautiful because they work together. They don't point fingers. They don't sit there and say, like, oh, you should have been here, should have been there. Like, they bad play, they move on to the next play. They stick together. You can tell there's a there's a unique bond that I never was able to see in college that they just truly have. They're, they were fighting for each other, not just the names on the back of their jersey. And I think that is so awesome. And then, obviously, Penix is, a, is an elite quarterback. But towards the end of the game, when you're seeing Penix and he is in the position he was, like holding his side, you can tell he just looks defeated. As a defense, if you're able to see that on the other side, and hopefully, I'm not hoping he's injured, but just to see him obviously bothered by the rush, obviously bothered about constantly taking hits the entire game, that has got to be like the best feeling as a defensive player. To see like, oh, we're breaking this cat down. Right. And getting home with four or five guys, like just blood in the water, basically. Penix is, he was missing a few, but I love the way he was operating. I haven't really, get, like, you know, Pac-12 is on the West Coast, so they're always, like, the latest games. Yeah. So I never gotten to, like, truly dial in and watch him. And the way he move, moves around the pocket and, you know, goes through his progression and just releases the ball, I think he's going to be good in the league. Yeah, is it Joe Klatt? That's the guy that does uh, the announcing. He's He's got a podcast. He's got a show. And when I was, like, trying to kind of jump on and learn a little bit more about Washington, pe what people are talking about Washington, Michigan, he, Joe, was very much like if you watched – the semifinal game and thought, oh, wow, Penix maybe should have been more in the Heisman race than he actually was. He's like, then you didn't watch Washington football because the guy like has it. He, the way he said it is like, he puts the ball in places just for his receivers to give his receivers the best opportunity. He called that leverage. He talks about how his pitch count, which I didn't see in the national championship game because he was throwing piss missiles over the middle and shallow mm -hmm. crosses and over to the flat. But he said his pitch count, he has touch on the ball. He's got incredible accuracy, his ability to move in the pocket. Like, Really saying the does. world to Penix to the point where, like, if Penix doesn't play for Washington, a team that's, like, a Pac-12 team that's playing at night and we're all kind of, like, going to bed and wind down from essentially the SEC game of the week that usually is played on Saturday nights, then he's probably going to win the Heisman. He probably wins the Heisman over uh, Jaden Daniels. Is that who it was? Yeah. So Jaden was. He was electric. Like, you know, yeah. You know, I'm not saying that to take away from him. I'm saying that more. I'm not trying to throw a little strike in there. Like, if he was operating in the SEC or Big Ten. Uh, he would probably get the Heisman. Yeah, yeah. If he was playing more of those, like, yeah, the big noons, those 3.30 games or that, like, that primetime game. But you're playing at those 10.30 games against ASU. Right. It's like, okay. Right. No one's really watching that, which, shame on the Heisman voters. Because is if he was really as good as Joe Clout was alluding to, then I don't know what happens in that Heisman race. Like I said, this is not about me tearing down Daniels. It's more about building Penix up. But it was awesome, dude. It was awesome. It was... um. Shout out everybody who showed up on the stream. Yeah. But having fun. We were trying to get 15,000 in there. So JP, for whatever reason, said he'd let Michael Chandler choke him unconscious. Yeah. He, even crazier than that, it was like at one point, JP pivoted to, I'll take a leg kick from Mike. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'd much rather get choked unconscious. And what's funny is before the 15,000, I was like, yeah, I'm trying to think, help him out. Like, man, it, it might be able to get there. So I was like, hey, we go like 20,000 or something. And then JP's like, I'll do it for 15. I'm like, all right. What you want? Yeah, if you want to bring Obviously it down. Obviously, you never sn sniffed that much on the street. No, I never sniffed it. Never sniffed it. But, but still, the thought of like him going unconscious. Yeah. Just getting choked out for the boys, for the chat. What was uh, for the chat? Why so many for the, the choke out? Because the choke out is, it's not that bad. I, I mean, I feel like there's way more things that can go wrong with a choke out than a leg kick. Yeah, I think so. I can, I can handle a leg kick. Like you go down, it hurts for the next couple of days and you're done. But like, Worst case You're scenario, the leg kick. Yeah, I'm giving him the shit, and he Mike has to push shin the fight bone. back. He'll feel it a titanium shin hey, bone. Hey, feels hey, like legit. I was uh, <laughs> when he was talking about a leg kick. <laughs> I thought, man, I hope Mike doesn't get hurt. Like Mike is messing around, oh, and throws a little leg kick at you, and hurts himself. God, that would fucking suck. nah. Yeah, tough look. Yeah, yeah tough, tough look. look. I was just trying to get the chat popping. Yeah, Will had hit the pen. Th like, Will was getting quiet. 
Taylor was walking around behind the couch. I was, fo- yeah, I was nervous and focused. I mean, we were just streaming the national championship, like our first stream ever. We we're like doing it in a game. We're wanting to be yeah. locked in on it and watch. There's a lot of opportunity in the stream game, though. You yeah. could see it with, I mean, even the coin of destiny was a good move. I think it's hilarious. We played a game of werewolf at halftime. Which is literally oh God, that pissed me off. Which is literally Will's favorite like game night game to play, and he's murdered the when, literally <laughs> when I think I think it was uh yeah, Steven. Steven and Dylan, like they open their eyes, they notice each other, and they immediately both go same time and point at you. I go. I know, you of know. Of course. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. Because part of you, I mean, you I don't know if with that crew, because you don't play everybody, but in your head, you're like, of course they'd get me out. Are you well, that? I wasn't thinking that. I was like, maybe I'll maneuver this one out. What I honestly thought happened is I thought Ruse was the witch and you know how he gets salty sometimes. Yeah. Like, I just figured he just wanted to kill me. And then he goes around and kills another person in the yeah, second round. Yeah, he was <laughs> hailing that all wrong. It's, it's tough being the witch. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's tough being the witch because you, if you're saving somebody, you could be saving a werewolf. Mm-hmm. And then they could uh, allude away. Uh, Coop, I know it's your first time playing the game, but as the seer, brother, you need to be much more beneficial to the process. That was insane. Crazy. Watching him and, uh, like... Ultimately, you're just like sitting there and you just start to figure out like, wow, JP and Coop are going to be the ones on trial and neither of them. And literally Coop was the seer and pointed at JP and Taylor's like, so I'm just thinking like, Coop, you've got to like allude to JP if he points you out there like, hey, brother, I'm not the werewolf and I know you're not the werewolf. We got to figure out who these other ones are. Right. How do you know I'm not the werewolf? Trust me. I know that you are not the werewolf. Yeah. It's all right, though. But right. what better opportunity? Coop. I know, I know. I couldn't talk at all. I was dead. If, you were, uh, if you're joining us right now and you're noticing an extra guy in the back, we've mentioned him a couple of times. Cooper, our new graphic designer for Bust with the Boys. Let's give this man a round of applause. Coop, tell us a little bit about yourself, brother. Where are you from? Your favorite meal? When you lost your virginity? Those types of things. Just give us the basics. I'll start with, uh, where I'm from. Okay. From Texas. Hey, Hoss. What part of right, Texas? Route. Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, mm. Keller. Is that where Billy Bob's is? Dallas, yeah. Okay. Um, went to Oklahoma State. Go Pokes. I go Pokes. What, go I mean, Pokes. what are we talking about? Are you a Michigan Wolverine? I'm both. Are you uh, Pokes? <laughs> are you SMU Mustangs? Like, what are we doing? I'm Oklahoma State product, Michigan fan. All right. Couldn't get into Michigan, I guess. I guess not. What made you a Michigan fan? Uh, I got family from there. Okay. What part? Uh, Farmington Hills. It sounds like a nice, rich area. I think it's yes. right next to Detroit. Did, suburb, suburb. It's a nice, rich area of, <clears throat> of Detroit. Were you in college? No for money. <laughs> Were you going to uh, Oklahoma State Cowboy games in college? Yeah. Cheering them on? Yeah. If Michigan had came in and played them, who are you rooting for? At the time that you were at Oklahoma State. Look, this question got me in trouble with my friends a lot. Michigan got theirs the other night. I'll probably go with Oklahoma State now. Right when I got to Oklahoma hold State? Hold on, hold on, oh. brother. That's not the question that was asked. <laughs> the question that was asked is, you are a student at Oklahoma State, and the Michigan Wolverines come into Stillwater All right. and are going to try to take down your Cowboys, who you are invested in giving them money to get an education. Who are you rooting for? I- I'll root for the Pokes. Then you're I not a go. Michigan fan. Well, why not? You're not a champion. <laughs> <laughs> we are sh- immediately... We are stripping you of your national no title. Right? Hey, the, you know what the good news is? Is you're you're in good company. You and Mitch are essentially sounds like the same exact fans <laughs> of sports. He seems a probably a better fan than Mitch because at least he's cheering for like colleges he went to. Me? Yeah, we we I cheer for my college. I cheer for my college, but my college is the smallest college of anybody here. Doesn't mean you can't have pride. I do so have pride. I do no. I do We're have pride. Army. I do have pride in Susquehanna State College. I do have pride in Susquehanna, but like... You're a Penn State guy. You're an Ohio State guy. You're a Chiefs fan. Yankees. You're, you're a Yankees. Cowboys. You're a Red Sox fan. Eagles, Philly. Yeah. Phillies. Like, you, brother, you're just taking all the good ones. You're just taking all the good ones. The only sports that I care about is football. I don't care about any sports, of those... That's a plural. No. Nah, sports teams. football, NFL, football. <laughs> all right, <JK. laughs> I, I I can't be a like I am a Susquehanna fan, but I can't be like cause who rock is nobody knows who that is. But wear it with pride. I do wear it with pride. I was wearing a Susquehanna shirt during the the stream last yeah, night. Yeah, I noticed it. You didn't say anything. You didn't say anything once about it. That is not true. Anyone ever seen him wear Susquehanna gear? I mean, I mean no. last night he was wearing it. Yeah, last night. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was what I was saying. Well, 
last night was the first time <laughs> I've seen you. Yeah. Get back to Coop. Yeah, so congratulations, Coop, on working with Bustin' with the Boys. You're with the squad in the back. We got a nice little, we got a tight-knit group. We got a tight-knit group. Tight squad here. Give us your first impressions of the boys. What do you think of Garrett? What was your first thought of Garrett? This is Garrett, by the way. I know. Uh, I mean, I like him. I, I haven't had a Close chance to mouth. not like him yet. Close your mouth. Close your Sorry. Mouth. No, I like, like Garrett. Yeah. What about JP? Love JP. JP's been great. Okay, so you like JP Lighter, more than Garrett. Love JP. Okay. That's nice. Well, what, about Mitch? what about Mitch? You know, he's got the Ohio State, Penn State thing, but he's been cool too. Okay, so we'll put him third. It sounds oh, like he's already third. He goes, JP, Garrett, Ranky. What do you think about McPherson over here in the corner? I mean, look at him. He's got, he's got style. I like him. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he, might be, he might have the most style. Okay, Jack, that's got to feel good. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take second <laughs> then because JP got the love, though. So Yeah, yeah. But second's better than third or fourth. So Coop's rankings of the boys in the back right now goes JP, Jack, Garrett, Mitch. No, you don't have to answer. Yeah, that wasn't a question for you. It was more like a, is that, we all in agreement to that? How we, how we, yeah, the graphic <laughs> of the power rankings, that's what they stand right now. They're ever flowing. So, hey. Power rankings, rankings graphic? Yeah, yeah. Or, Make yeah. your own graphic. Well, congrats, buddy. Thank you, guys. Thank We're you. We're happy to have you. We are happy to have you. So, yeah, dude, Michigan's national champs. What's going to happen now? Next 48 hours, Harbaugh's going to leave. What was interesting, he was on, uh, Scott Van Pelt show after. Mm -hmm. And he goes, uh, I told the guys we usually start Valentine's Day for spring football because we love football, but we're going to move it a month. Yeah, I saw that. But to me, that's just Harbaugh. He, he is, he is where his feet are. Like, right. He's still the head football coach of Michigan. So he's going to, I mean, you saw him trying to celebrate last night. He had no clue how to celebrate. He had he's no clue. process. He is all fucking yeah. process. We all did he, that. Yeah. Yeah. We did that. Take it, pull that down. Pull it down. <laughs> it's like, yo, he, he has no clue how to be happy about this and excited. You know, he is, but yeah. all he's thinking about is, man, I'm going to push spring ball back a month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, how are we going to, how are we going to conquer that month without practicing? Right. Unless his agent calls and says, Hey, here are the offers on the table. All he's thinking about is how he gets these boys ready and how they start prepping for spring ball and how to repeat. How do you be like, what, what's been your favorite national title? The next one. That's what he's trying to do right now. Yeah. He is a, he is definitely a present and process oriented yeah, guy. Yeah. Cause if he was, if he was 1000% staying, everybody's like, did Har I saw somebody be like, did Harbaugh just admit to staying to Michigan? He would have already signed his deal. Yeah. I wonder if, I mean, this is, I, I really believe he's going to go to the NFL when it's I all said too. and done. But I, if in the world of thinking Harbaugh is going to stay, is this a, uh, he wins the natty and he's like, hey, 125 million, 10 years is not even close to enough. Double it. I don't think so. It's at that point, man, how much does everybody, all these dudes need to, like you, you want to be in the top five money conversation, like maybe the best, right? But, right. I mean. But he can't be number one, right? Because uh, Saban has a, something in his contract that he has to be the highest paid. Oh, for real? That'd be hilarious if like, no matter who resets the market, I have to be at ten thousand dollars above them. Yeah, it has to. Be, yeah, just one dollar. Yeah, yeah. Even like thirty cents. I don't. I, I, you know, I know we're gonna get in and talking about it, but I think there's no way he stays because of all the investigation stuff that's going to ultimately come about in a year or two. Yeah. However long the process takes, and and because we were talking about on the flight home from uh, Montana, which we can get to that too, because uh, Meat Eater was all time. Mm. Um, but we were kind of talking like why like. Harbaugh is just a 1 billion percent football guy. Like, in his mind, he wants an NFL Super Bowl. He wants a national championship. And he wants to be considered one of the greatest coaches of all time that was converted from a player, from a quarterback. Like, he is super competitive. Now that he's reestablished a premier program like Michigan, what, are you guys the winningest college football program of all time? We have the most wins. The most but wins, the winningest yeah. percentage-wise, I think, is Notre Dame. Either way, but reestablishing a school like that, the way he has in these last however many years he's been with Michigan, mm -hmm. and to go playoff, uh, get beat by Georgia, playoff again, get beat by TCU, and then make a run again and win it all and beat, you know, Alabama, beat the SEC champion, beat the Pac-12 champion. It's like now he's a national title, and he's going to be a – he's he's like an A-plus hire for the NFL. And in my opinion, he wants to go back to the NFL, so that way, you know, he had the Harbaugh Bowl – uh, against his brother with the Niners, like he's been to the Super Bowl. So this is, you know, like 
he's got the he's got all of the tools to be a top coach at every level. And I think now he wants to conquer the NFL because he's basically con- like what are those college have? football? I wonder he's not in college ball unless he's trying to repeat right. But there's just you know with everybody everything happened. It's like ah, oh, it's not worth that. It's not going to be worth the drama. He can just he didn't give a fuck. I wonder if like allegations aside, if he wins that game in 2012 against his brother and wins the Super Bowl, he probably stays at Michigan. Yeah, possibly. But now there's just unfinished business. You got to get back there and get it. And I think if you're a Michigan fan, you just say, hey, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Shake his hand, put the statue up right next to Bo Schembechler and move on. Yeah. And just be like, hey. Some people's mind maybe replace it. What's that? Some people's mind maybe replace it. Replace Schembechler? Oh, because the... Yeah. Come on. I don't know a whole lot about it. I just know when I posted my photo. Yeah, people were getting... that's like getting all over me. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? You know what's wild is I didn't know anything about it until we posted that photo. <laughs> oh, really? I was like, oh, Schembechler was like that? I didn't know. <laughs> no, I, didn't know. I didn't know there was those, kind of, those kinds of allegations yeah, going on. Yeah. What do you I say? think uh, something with Jim Harbaugh that like everyone in college football should take note of is how long was he... How long has he been at Michigan? I think like six years now. So it took him six years to rebuild a program. And that's Jim Harbaugh, who's considered one of the best football coaches of all time. And now it's like you got colleges. Say if Matt Rule it has him at six and six in year three, like people will be calling for his head. Mm-hmm. It's same with like Shane Beamer. Which is what happened with Harbaugh, which I don't even know if he was six and six, right? Wasn't right. he like? I think the 2020 year, they were two and four. Oh, the COVID year. Yeah, that's the right. COVID year. And he right. literally had to renegotiate his contract to take less money just to stay because everybody's calling for head. I was, Dave was, like the, all the fans were, the school was. I know. This is a great example of like, give your that. coach time. Like if you yeah, really yeah. want someone to rebuild your program, Harbaugh is a perfect example. It's like, such yeah. an interesting thing too because it's like, like Harbaugh who is a proven coach, right? He was in the NFL. It's very difficult for a college coach to go to the NFL and be successful. We saw that with Nick Saban and who else? There was one, oh, Urban Meyer. We saw that happen. But like being from going from the NFL and then into college, like he is a guy, proven dude that can like get men to get behind him. Mm. And like, whoa. Oh yeah. Zero pause. <laughs> get men to no get pause. behind him. Yeah, get behind him in a big way. But do you look at, and I will just use like uh, Beamer as an example, as a coach that doesn't have that pedigree, do you give him the same amount of time as a guy like Harbaugh? It's like, well, he's proven he can do this. I think if Harbaugh gets six years, you would give a young guy arguably even longer. Like, Eight years or whatever. You have more of a chance to develop. I don't time. hate it. Yeah. If they're showing unless, good unless signs of recruiting uh, Unless and everything. they're promoting internally. Right. Yeah. Because the, the, the culture is already established. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only one who's who's done it is uh, we're uh, Jimmy Johnson. He won a national title in Miami. Uh, he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, Barry yeah, Switzer. Yeah, Carol. Barry Switzer. Pete Carroll. Carol. That's right. Yeah, we were talking about last yesterday. Because we I, I thought it was Jimmy, just Jimmy Johnson, too. And then we essentially had this exact conversation. Yeah. I think there's one more. From like the 40s, though, or something. Okay. Doesn't count. I've been like dipping my toe in his book called Swagger. It's uh, Jimmy Johnson's book. Yeah. And he, once he won, and then they had like a, a bad falling out between him and Dallas, like Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson. And uh, he essentially retired, and people like go out to him, like fly out and travel out to him because all he does is like fish every day. And coaches fly out to him, and I forget what they call it, but they go out to him and just like pick his brain since he was somebody who was able to you know, lead a Super Bowl winning team, coach a, a team like Miami, like back in the 90s with all of those things, you know, it's all about the you, like all the players and personalities that he dealt with. But apparently a lot of coaches just flock out to him for like advice in the offseason because he just stays out there and fishes. Like he doesn't do a whole lot with coaching anymore. Just does his thing. Yeah. What is, uh, what was Steven saying yesterday about Jimmy Johnson? He was like, that was so-and-so's team. It was kind of like- uh, saying Barry Switzer had Jimmy Johnson's team when he won with the Cowboys. Got you. Yeah. Got you. It's true. Yeah. I mean, that's a was in the nineties. That's a wild deal. Per, like I do, I want Harbaugh to, to go. I want like just for him and the whole storyline of all the things we we were talking about on the way back to from Montana. The it was legacy like, of Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, and you kind of just wherever he goes, I'm just gonna root for him because mm-hmm. that's gonna be that's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. We'll get uh we'll get more into. I, I don't know if we have any more college stuff. But let's talk about Zip Recruiter for a second, dude. It's the new year. That means more hiring. And according to Forbes, January's hottest month is the hottest month for business owners and hiring managers are on the hunt for top talent, which is no easy task. If you are currently hiring, you probably can relate. It's challenging to find qualified candidates. That's why you need ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology finds the right people for your roles fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash bus. And that's B-U-S-S-I-M. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology starts showing you candidates 
whose skills and experience match it to encourage top candidates to respond to your job post even sooner. Zip, Recru Zip Recruiter lets you send them a, per a personal invite to apply. This month, find the talent you need to fill all the roles with Zip Recruiter. See yourself See for yourself why four out of five employees who post with ZipRecruiters get qualified candidates within the first day. Just go to the exclusive web address right now and try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Bussin, B-U-S-S-I-N. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash B-U-S-S-I-N. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Mm. Nice. 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 Did you guys ever do ZipRecruiter? Ever jump on there? I made an account one time. Yeah? What's that? That's how we found Coop. Coop. Nice. A zip recruiter cat, dude. I like it. But yeah, let's get into these allegations. What do we think is going to happen to Michigan this offseason? Will, we'll start with you, the number one enemy of Michigan. Death penalty. Yeah, I think they're done. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're done. And then you look back on the uh, 2023 Nebraska football season and we're five and six. Five and six. We, you guys we played five, one less yeah, game? Yeah, we were five and seven. Yeah, they take that. They take the wins away. You got yeah. to vacate the title. Man, even in this thought process, you see, I still don't make a bowl game. I know. I know. <laughs> it's just crazy. You could have well, at least wanted to be like six and six. I was hoping we like get it reversed. Like, yeah, we get the win. but And then have to I play a bowl game in away. March. Like, I just think they take all your wins away. That'd be wild. Yeah. Does anybody disagree with that? I do. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Who, there's a, who's the guy that does like the, uh, the TikToks on Barstool? He's got the longer hair. Back, back. Jack Mack, he had a great thing about how this national championship is the purest national championship in, in college football history. They were Can't wait to hear what you heard on TikTok. The, the FBI, the FBI was literally watching Michigan with a microscope for Penn State, Ohio State, I mean, Maryland and Iowa as well, Alabama and Washington. No room for cheating, no room for anything. When we all know, SEC, has done a lot of that in the past. Those players have told us they've cheated. So with that being said, even when the, <clears throat> when the allegations come out and all this stuff is, hey, Michigan did X, Y, and Z. We're going to take away this. We're going to take away that. There's no denying that the University of Michigan was the best college football program in 2023. There's no denying it. So they can put an asterisk by it. People, the haters can get mad. Husky fans, Crimson Tide fans, Ohio State fans, Nittany Lion fans can all be mad. But at the end of the day, we whooped ass and we had the best team in college football in 2023. 2020, this next season, I don't know. We're going to have 19 guys leave. The coaching staff's going to essentially be dissolved in a lot of ways. Hopefully, Sharon Moore gets the head coaching job. If they don't like, you know, completely clean house, if these allegations are true, but we will always have, as Michigan people, we will always have the best team in the 2023-2024 season. Yeah, it's the same way Cardinals fans and Giants fans look back at Mark McGuire and Barry Bonds. Like they were, it was fun. Those are fun times to look back on. But we all, it, it all came out. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know I mean? mean, if we're talking about what was it, the 90s era of baseball when everyone was doing steroids, everybody was doing it, and these two top guys happened to also get in trouble. Okay, I could say the same. If Michigan was cheating, there's plenty of evidence coming out about Ohio State doing it, Rutgers of all people, other Big Ten teams, SEC wait, wait, teams play, paying players, players before NIL. Well, well, exactly. Come out. That's what I'm saying. So we're talking about these two guys in baseball getting getting caught for doing something wrong when it was generally known that everybody else was doing it, mm -hmm. and they became the the you know the send a message in the MLB. The same things you go for college football. If they're going to send a message of Michigan, we're probably going to go down figuring out that a lot of these other teams were also doing it. Michigan just did it better. I'm, so what I'm hearing is it's it's worse than we all anticipated, or it could be worse than it's all been thought of. A source that I don't, you know, I don't give out my sources. You don't give out your sources? No. But uh, from what I've been told um, from a reliable source is no, that sources. you're looking at potentially even Michigan, even new ways to hack other teams is like technology, like watch their practices, like get in their database. Um, so I'm sure it'll take a year or two, but. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll, yeah, let, yeah. we'll let the due process take care of itself. That is that's truly that's just an key. assumption. That's an yep. assumption. Assumption can lead to a lot of negative things. But that's just what I've been told. One thing that's not an assumption is the shirt that I'm wearing right now, this champ shirt, that you can get at store.barstoolsports.com slash busting with the boys. That is a fire shirt. This shirt is fantastic. If you don't order this shirt in the next 24 hours, you'll probably never be able to have this shirt again. Because we're probably going to get C&D. Probably. 
right away. Harbaugh's face, 100%. We've already been kind of been told. We've but, already been kind of told. You guys are going to get seed indeed for that. Same with the championship ring, where it says national and there's a ring and champions. Oh, that okay. Stuff I was curious, like, because even Barstool's releasing a lot. I was like, oh, I wondered if they're talking to the person where they can license it. They're just taking a shot until it gets seen. You know, because it's Dave. He was like, fuck it. Let's put it up. It'll sell. And then when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. Kind of like this season. Exactly. You, know, you have it. Exactly. And then when it's gone, it's gone. No, this, gone. This, 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 gone. this will be a fun year to look back on for the rest of our lives. Yeah. There's it, no it, question it, about it. And you guys did. You put up the middle finger to everybody. There was all the distraction in the world where you guys could have stumbled and failed along the way. Yes, myself hoping for it included. But you guys did. You guys persevered. You guys handled your business. It was when it was Penn State, it was like, oh, you guys didn't throw the ball in the second half. Maybe J.J. doesn't have it. We were like, hey, maybe J.J. sucks. Like, Penn State might just suck because our quarterback was bad. And then you guys take care of business against Ohio State. It was like, well, if they wouldn't have threw that pick in the first quarter, if this wouldn't happen, then it's like, well, the Wolf, you'll actually get to see him against the big dogs. They draw Alabama when we were all excited that you drew Alabama instead of Florida State. And I'm just grinning ear to ear thinking, I knew they went to Florida State. These motherfuckers, they're done. They're done. I put money. I put 2,000 tops on Alabama. to 1,000 to win the natty and 1,000 to beat you guys. Lost. You guys handled Alabama. You beat their ass in a fashion that's like, that sucked to see. That sucked to, uh, to, to witness. Then it's Washington. It's like all hands on deck. These motherfuckers can't win. And you guys beat Washington. You, you didn't beat Washington. You whooped their ass. So you guys get the, the confetti coming down. Yeah, you guys fucking did it. You guys, it was Michigan versus everybody. It was you versus the bus, and you guys came out on top. You beat the bus. Michigan beat everybody. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's what happened. That was fantastic. Essentially, you just bunny rabbit yourself, eight miles yourself just now. Well, you got to talk about how that, that, that is what happened. Like, that is exactly, exactly, exactly what, happened. what happened. Like, And then you didn't even mention the fact that the Big Ten tried to put in a suspend our head coach before the three big two biggest games of the year right yeah the whole yeah 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 the the whole thing did everything they possibly could to run us in the dirt but the person i'm not mad at uh patiti i'm not mad at these sanctions that are coming i'm not mad in general disappointed the person i'm most disappointed in is you why is that dog i can say right now even as nasty as you have been to play this villain if Nebraska is in the national championship versus anybody else other than Michigan, I would have red on. I'd be saying go big red. I'd fucking pay the mascot to not go to the national championship game so he could stream the game with us. That is how much I would support you. And because there were a couple of things, I did get a little nasty. This turned into however you wanted to make it. And I understand why it started that way. But I thought to myself, man, if I change my attitude and I'm a little more nicer, like the, after the Alabama game, didn't come in here swinging at the boys. I was just, I had a lot of gratitude, shook Garrett's hand and it was what it was. You continued to fight the good fight against your boy. And to me, it's just like, of, I get it. I know we're playing the game on Twitter. We're having fun. You're, you're doing the bulletin board material. But at some point, I would hope that friendship would take over clicks. Yeah, after you guys beat Alabama, did I not congratulate you? After you guys, you said, after you, you guys, congr- after, yeah. after you guys won the national title, did I not shake your hand? Yeah, you shook my hand. Like you, 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 I would have loved, I would have loved that battle to be all of us together. Even the boys in the back after the Alabama thing, everyone was going for blue. A little selfishly with the with the bets and all that, but I respect it. My boy over here made fifteen hundred dollars last night. But even when all the boys who we've all been fussing at each other. We've been fussing, getting chippy at each other all year. The boys in the back rode with Michigan because they were like, hey, we have no dog in this fight. We would love for one of our guys to win it. And then you go the day of the game and talk about all this stuff. And you finish the last three seconds of your video, but it's still go Huskies. Yo, the hardball of the Raiders? Yeah. You got to finish the story arc. You got to finish the story arc. Like, I needed to be the antagonist. You could have been the antagonist. It could have been the storyline of this guy's being the villain the whole time. And at the end, he has this epiphany that friendship trumps being the villain for whatever reason. And I'm, that's going to be it. You know what that is? That goes from you getting yours to now it's a rom-com. We're all happy for everybody. Right. I didn't want the rom-com. In. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I Look at us now. 
No, <laughs> I'm still mad. Uh, yeah, I saw. I saw you put. I saw you put. Up, I saw you put up the video of the things I was saying early in the yeah, year. Yeah, because you got to. And I and even when I posted, I was like, I just want to let this die. It, it hurt me. It, well, it didn't serve me you, you, to do it, but I knew. Hey, I got to do it. I just got to put this. You out dropped there. that last night after we had a a a valuable hug before I left. A valuable saying that we were glad it was over. Uh, no. That's not how it went. It was a valuable hug when I hugged you and I said, I'm glad this is over. Now we can stop hating each other and be friends again. And you know what you said? Congratulations. You said you smell nice. That's what you said. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you I'm hugging you. I genuinely hugged you. We did our handshake. I put the hands out without any. And then, you know, how we do this thing. It was arms out, hug. We embraced the hug. And then I an said, hour later. I said words trying to bridge a gap. That's obviously been... Just something right in the middle of us. And you finish with, you smell nice. Because we're having a moment. You know how it is to fully like accept and go inside of a moment as a dude? Yeah. You know what it is? You get a little queasy. Yeah. You get a little queasy. You, know, or you said just... my congratulations. It's not. All right. It's not about the congratulations, Will. You can literally sit there and we can all just say. And then like, even publicly. I say said, South Carolina is painful, in it next year. Like painful. we're all going to say regardless of what JP and I are beefing. At the end, if they win, I'm going to be like, hey, congratulations. That doesn't fix nothing. What do you mean it doesn't fix nothing? It's no. like being a gracious loser. And even publicly, like painfully, my sincerest uh, congratulations to Michigan fans and you guys. And I meant that. Like I, I, All you right. know, I get, I get how this is unfolded. Like I think you're missing a point. It's like you're, you're almost acting like you're out there, like you were a player on the team, and I'm like actively rooting. Like if the Titans went to the Super Bowl, and I'm like I'm rooting against my best friend. No, that wasn't it. It, it was just. We're competitive in absolutely everything we do. Video games, board games, werewolf, anything. We're competitive. And you were trying to figure out your character before the Nebraska stuff, and it was up and down. I couldn't get a read on it, so I drew a line like there's only going to be – like Portnoy doesn't make it any better. I wake up this morning, hey, I didn't get my congratulatory text. Like it's – you want you you think to yourself, if Michigan wins this game, like this can be the worst – fan base of winners of all time you have th there's history that could be like taylor could be a bad winner and then when we got in the moment of when you're beating the shit out of nebraska 45 to 7 or however bad it was and you're still in the fourth quarter like standing next to me like clap oh we need this series like man if we can't get this series and it's just like if the game is over like what do you, you just piss on the grave and then you're like hey i need 15 minutes on the bus tomorrow to be nasty to be, be nasty. x to be y z whatever it was and then you weren't, and you flipped the script, and I didn't know the script was flipped, and I think you're being nasty all the time. It's more of the up and down, he doesn't know who he wants to be. I'm going to have to definitively draw my line in the sand and hope that this downfall happens. See, here's the difference between you and I in these situations. I'm not trying to play a character in these situations. I truly, when we are going to a rivalry game, a trophy game, where Michigan and Nebraska are the two teams playing, mm -hmm. there's obviously going to be shit talk. There's obviously going to be a lot of words said back and forth. Yeah, there's going to be clapping. And if it's 45-7, Nebraska's beating Michigan's ass, I'm, you're going to do the same exact thing because that is the status quo in a big rivalry game and in a trophy game. What Minnesota, week one, I'm in Canada. Week zero, right? Week zero or week one? When week Nebraska zero. Minnesota. Week zero. I literally sit with myself in Canada by myself because there's not a whole lot to do in Canada. And I think, wow, Throughout the process of Michigan and Nebraska and us establishing these things, I've been much more vocal about being a Nebraska fan, supporting Nebraska, when really it's like you get the occasional go blue from Will, but it's not, it's not. Hey, 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 whole, uh, whole, and then we're gonna need we're gonna need the boys to jump in as well. Look, but as the year is unfolding you're, and you're becoming a fan and all the arguments of best fan bases and doing all this, that you can kind of sit there and feel like that a monster could be getting created if Michigan ends up winning the whole thing. Like, I don't feel like there's ever like a vibe of like, you know, you just want to root against Nebraska because I'm just out there just creating a lot of different arguments or doing things to poke everybody. Yeah, but it's, Because we've been losing, so it's almost easier to play in the position that I'm in. But it's like you go on these long car rides and you're just thinking like, man, hey, if Michigan doesn't slip up somewhere, boys, this Frankenstein's getting created right now. And you I don't know how it's going to end. I, and I don't disagree with that. But did I not make a pivot three, four weeks ago? Did I not make a pivot? Right, but at that like, point, you have like, to see the story through. No, because at the same time, I am sitting here being like, okay, I'm being a fan for the first time. I get real excited, start talking crazy to the boys. And then there's the internal dialogue of, hey, you, you can win a certain way. You can handle it a certain way. If you decide to take it and be like, all right, he's going to make a couple comments like that. There's Frankenstein being made. Now I'm just going to go and just be the worst. 
how was how am I like being actively the worst the entire time? You know, at the end of the day, I'm trying. I'm like, I'm trying to be that. Like, yeah, I see what you know, all the things that people are saying, but it's like it doesn't matter. I'm trying to see this story arc through. Like, the line was drawn in the sand, and I had to stand on principle. All right, if that is what like you. You're, you're almost making it seem like I'm the worst best friend and I root against you in absolutely everything you do, which could not be crazy. farther from the truth. I think it's crazy that my team's in the national championship against a Pac-12 team. Well, Big Ten, Big Ten. That's going to be a Big Ten team. Big Ten they team. Haven't, they haven't joined yet, regardless. And you can't root for my boys. Yeah, I can't root for them. All right. I couldn't root That's for them. That's fine. You, didn't, you, don't, you, you, guys, that, you guys don't want to be in the Big Ten. I, I don't want them to be in the Big Ten. Yeah, they so what, what am the I supposed way, to do? The way if, if, root, for you, root for you who doesn't want to be associated? Flipped, if it was flipped and Nebraska was in the same position Michigan was and the Big Ten tried to do to Matt Rule what they tried to do to Jim Harbaugh, are you not sitting there going, they should leave the Big Ten? If, the, if they're going to, before due process, try to put the hammer down and try to get them to slip up by taking the head of the, ahead of the snake away? No, because I don't think we do what you guys did. You didn't listen to the question. I said, but, if you, but if you're, you're asking flipped. a hypothetical. Okay, if it's okay, so you. But thinking, I can't wrap my head around that hypothetical because because the coach, integrity of Nebraska. Yeah, is the too integrity strong. of Nebraska is just too deep, man. We got too many good Dog, people there. That is crazy. It's go big red. All right, I, I listen. We're not going to get anywhere. There here. are there are no there are no reasons that make you think I'm going to root against Nebraska. Like you can find moments of being like ah. You need Michigan to go down. You need the humble. Like Dave, you want Dave to not be a champion. Dave has like seven Super Bowls. I know. I know. And he's now he's, enough. Enough. he's won enough. Yeah, but inadvertently, while you praying on Dave's downfall, if that's how you're going to cut it, we're, we're rooting against Dave. You're rooting against me too. Yeah, I know. That's, how, that's why at times like it's kind of like the whole fallback thing. I'm happy you're a national champion, bro. Because I, I, I feel like we all got to take part of you becoming a fan this year. So I am happy that you've handled it this way as a champion. You've done, you, you've, done a, you've done a great job. I might have to retire from being a fan. Why? It's so stressful. It's so stressful. It's so hard to be a fan of a legitimately good team. Oh, my yeah. God. It is so... No, listen. That could sound a whole bunch of different ways. But if you're in the, if you're in, if, listen, if you're a middle of the pack ACC team, so right, no one's getting, no one's taking shots here. It's like, yeah, you're hoping they beat the, the Florida States or you're hoping they beat whatever the good teams are in the ACC. But when you are a top team of a conference, it could be the SEC, it could be the Pac 12, it could be any of the conferences, and you know that it's a disappointment if they don't win the conference, when they get to the big games, it's like, it's stressful as hell. And JP, you can shake your head all you want, bro. Because you sound crazy. Dog, no. Because listen, it's different. It's fucking it's different. Not different. Bro, I'm not trying to you hurt you. You don't know what I've been through. Bro. It's you don't not. know hard. You don't know hard. Yes, I do. Making it to the college football playoff is hard. You, yes. You don't know what it's like being 0 and 12. <laughs> I know it's like being 2 and 13 or 2 and 15. I know it's like being three and thirteen. With I know who? with the Tennessee Titans. We're not talking about the Titans. Okay, I know what it's them. like to be oh nine and to the thirteen with Michigan and suck, and all the old players come back and be like, "You guys fucking suck." No, and hang you're on, playing for that team. Slow down, hey, let's slow down. I'm just saying. No, like you, you, you literally act, JP. You uh, listen. You're a fantastic fan, but you're acting like we don't know fucking struggles out here. Y'all don't. You know. know what are you hey, talking hey, about? Hey. hey, hey. <laughs> The only yeah. person we can really point at finger at is maybe Garrett. And because he's had so much success. <laughs> Literally, that's it. Everybody here has truly felt pain. What happened in your and first year of being year. a fan? What's that? What happened we in your first year? 15 and 0, we won the national championship. And I sweated between Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State. Mar hey, hey, I know. Give me a second. Hey, I'll get I'll, I'll tune it down in a second. Just give me two. Yeah, I appreciate you. I can see it. I can see it. Thank you. Thank you. Maryland. I was up till I was up. The whole night with Dana, just trying to be a supportive force. And then I'm watching JJ throw picks. I'm like, are we going to fucking lose to Maryland? Well, we should probably be in the national championship. The stress is, it's just, it's just different, JP. Okay? Because if. I hope one day I'll what understand. Was, what was South Carolina's record this year? What was South Carolina's record this year? I know the answer. I just want you to say it. Five and Seven. six. If you're five and seven, we, we should have beaten that. If your if your record eventually is five and seven, 
after one or two losses, now you've justifiably in your head said, okay, we're not going to win the national championship. Maybe, no, listen, we're not going to win the national championship. We have two losses. There's going to be more teams. There's a team that went undefeated that still was in the, in the national championship. Then after a couple more losses, you're like, okay, we can't, we can't make the SEC championship. So you're slowly able to kind of work through that in your therapist brain of yours being like, okay, I understand. We're not going to win the SEC championship. Now it's a bowl game. If we beat Clemson, we're in a bowl game. And it doesn't happen. And you fight through those, that, that type of stuff. So there's incremental. When you are, when you're a fan of a team that has the capability throughout the entire season of going to the national championship, when these Penn States, when these Ohio States, when these Alabamas and these Washingtons come up, Nebraska's. the Nebraska's come up, there is a true, like, the only, the only good thing that can come out of this is a win. I don't have the ability to go and spin it when we're going five and seven. It's like, yeah, but we got Matt rule and we're going to be able to do X, Y, and Z and we're getting better incremental. You can look at it. If we just wouldn't have had all of the interceptions, we would be eight and four. Like there's no spinning that if Michigan lost at all, it was, it's it, the hardball has gone. JJ's gone. Blake's gone. Everything they worked for is gone. So it's just different. Does that make sense? But I think that's every good team who's on a run with the potential of going to the natty. You're saying what, G? <laughs> it's just, listen, and it's, it's my first year. I, I don't think Michigan will be, as it stands right now with all the things that possibly come in without seeing transfers, without seeing development of players, who leaves, who doesn't, odds are Michigan's not going to be the best squad next year. That's just the odds. Because while we've been fighting for this national championship, Ohio State's getting quarterbacks. They're getting... They're getting running backs. Penn State's grabbing guys. Matt Rule is doing a great job over there getting a five-star number one recruit. Like, those things have happened where we've had to focus on winning a natty. Thanks. So, are they going to be the best team next year? Who fucking knows? But the answer is probably not. But just know that the fight is... It's when there's... It just means more when you know what's at stake. When you know the reality of what's at stake. I'm not taking away from your fandom. But you knew week six or seven, we could have fun. We could have won out. Teams could have lost. Uh, that, right that's what makes you. It. That makes you the best fan on this bus. Uh, that's not what I'm out here trying to be. I know. I know. You're trying to hold, have a ring. I think we all want to win. We all want to win. Disappointing when we lose. But it's fucking stressful. Just to go back to the core root of how this whole thing started. It is so stressful. It's also exciting to be a fan. It's exciting. Like, yes, everything about like the way the season ended. But if we would have, bro, <laughs> when Alabama and Michigan were playing and Alabama went up in the fourth quarter, I thought there's, I might have to just give my 50% of busting with the boys to you and say, hey, I can't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. It's too much. It's the pressure. The pressure was too much. So you think it's more stressful to be an, a 15-0 no. Michigan team? Mm. Oh, I, I thought that's what you were trying to say. Oh, sorry. No, I, th I thought you were... I legit that's thought you were... No, yeah, yeah, you're right. I thought you were going to pivot to playing versus being a fan, but go ahead. You think it's more stressful to be a, a fan of a national championship team than it is to be a fan of a team like mine, JP's, Jack's this year? I think being a fan of Michigan right now is not as stressful. But when you're in the beginning of November with the slate of schedule coming up with the Penn States and the Ohio States, and you know what's at stake and what the team is capable of as a fan, it's more stressful than fighting the good fight of being like, hey, we'll get them. Hey, if there wasn't just X, Y, and Z. Because the, the, the standard isn't that high yet with the Nebraska. With South Carolina, oh man, it, that, I, I feel you. It's not, just, it's not. The, it's not the national. I'm not, I'm not trying standard. to be nasty. This is. I'm really. I, I'm trying to. That was nasty. Explain it. That was I nasty. Didn't even take but a shot. so, what do you mean? Wait, hold, hold, hold. What about that was nasty? You saying that the standard isn't high enough at these massive programs? Just because you guys just won a national championship, yes. But you also have to remember, you guys didn't play a ranked opponent until November eighth of the yeah. season. And listen, I, the, the, maybe I can clarify where I didn't mean for it to be nasty. When I say the standard's not there, I'm not saying that the coaches and the players don't want to win a national championship. That's their standard. I'm saying like, when you objectively look at the teams and you see, okay, from a talent standpoint, are we capable of doing X, Y, and Z? 
it's either a yes or it's a no. And if the answer is no, you're still going to fight for a national championship. But Michigan had the talent, they had the coaching, and therefore the standard and the goal was clear. And that's not trying to take a shot. I hope South Carolina wins the SEC next year. What? Now that's another shot for me and Garrett. I hope South Carolina is in a fight for the SEC next year. You're right. I shouldn't have said it like that. I hope Nebraska wins the Big Ten West next year. (laughs) I do too. I hope hope all of those things. It's just fucking stressful when you know what you're capable of. When we're five and three. Living up to your true like potential is like if Michigan didn't win the way they won this year, then they truly didn't live up to their true potential. Does that make sense? I yeah, oh, it makes sense. Yes. Think of all the shortcomings. Yeah. The well, Nebraska. Yeah, and I didn't mean experience. I didn't mean to say I want no, 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 five no, and three about to be bowl eligible. We dropped four in a row. This is a productive, this this is a productive right conversation, now. and you have every right to be enjoying this moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. Let's not I get that. that. Yeah. This but, is good. This is growth, boys. Well, what is more stressful? The what's more stressful? The 2023 season you just witnessed, or the possibility of getting a bad haircut? Your hair may be growing fast, but after going to Sport Clips haircuts, you'll wish you grew it even faster. You will wish it grew even faster. That's because Sport Clips has the best seats in hair. And that may or may not be because they happen to be right in front of TVs playing sports all day long, every day. We know that watching sports while getting a haircut sure beats watching your reflection getting a haircut, which is why Sport Clips every day is clippers and curveballs, high tops and Hail Marys, and even waves and wickets. If you're into that kind of thing at sport clips, you can check in with the pros and men's hair and totally check out with pure uninterrupted relaxation. So yeah, come watch an endless stream of sports on TV while getting an awesome haircut sport clips. It's a game changer. And as a matter of fact, the coin of destiny caught up to me yesterday and I have to get the Peaky Blinders haircut again. Uh, Tails hit three times in a row. So I will be going to sport clips and getting the, uh, the MVP haircut of the Peaky Blinders Uh, sport clips. Go there. Go there. Yeah, so... Um, Mike's got to do the haircut, too. Yeah, he does. That when you made that pivot on whatever it lands on is what you have to stick with was really a game changer. That was heady because I fell for that. Yeah. I fell for that. Was that before or after the vitamins? I think that was before. Oh. Yeah, no, I think that was right before. I mean, yeah, I, that was... Yeah, you just a little bit. Because I didn't catch on until the second. Even Mike hit it. And I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, the only bad guys basically got to get two in a row. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Smart though, heady, heady play. The uh, one my when my mustache was up for getting shaved, I was nervous. That was a nervous that added on to the nerves when I really wasn't even passionate about it. How do we feel about the stream boys in the back? Do we like doing it? Do we enjoy doing? it? Is that something we want to go down the road of more? Yeah, I thought that it was a uh, very beneficial. I mean, we were all new to the game. Um, so whoever watched, thanks for putting up with some of the pitfalls we experienced. We need to figure out, I think, some better audio, um, not equipment, but just better sound spacing mm-hmm. um, so that people aren't just a little too far from the mics. Um, I think that we can game plan a little bit more in like the dead space areas. I think the Coin of Destiny helped really well to fill those commercial breaks. Um, I do know we had some fun playing Werewolf. I don't know if the chat necessarily loved it. Um, I said sober guys suck. <laughs> but I think it, it was awesome. I think there's a lot of good things that we can go down that that road with. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. I enjoyed it. When you say audio space, is my my spot's not? I think you were fine. I, I just think it, at some mics. points, yeah, we need more mics. Yeah. And we probably need stands so they're directionally facing instead of sitting on a table just kind of like in the whatever. In the vicinity. Yeah, and people, you just don't realize it, and you're laying back, or you you walked away a little bit, and you say something, and it like picks up in and out. Um, like I think the like Peaky Blinders, either that or some other Coin of Destiny, the audio. Oh no, it was the the question that won the giveaway. Would you rather Michigan win the national championship and Connor knock Mike out, or vice versa? Yeah, that was a great question. A great question, but we weren't talking in the mic, so it didn't even get picked up. We weren't? I thought I was holding it. No, no I was behind when, you know, that little like coffee table area. Mm-hmm. If you're on the other side of the coffee table area, it doesn't pick up. And that's where I was standing. Got you. Because we were in the middle of trying to do werewolf as well. Got you. Yeah, but more mic stands. I think that's a good area too. It's fun. And then we have like, yeah, 
if we have some game plan stuff yeah more just like the audience involved structure to a live yeah. stream we basically just said like hey let's do a live stream mm -hmm. while michigan's you know playing in the natty yeah yeah i thought it was solid i enjoyed it i was i was surprised we had 1.5 in there yeah i because when we were my expectations were just like just expect the worst 70 yeah. people 70 i thought people. if you i thought if we get 500 people in there at one time i was like we're yeah, yeah we're yeah. doing it and i thought it'd be like when you go like instagram live it'll like shoot up and then, and then quickly plummet back down yeah yeah, we stayed above 1100 all night. We could probably do some fun stuff at the shop. Yeah. Honestly. Well, I mean, they said, like, in the chat, like, they want to see a risk stream. You know, we could think I of think a bunch of ideas so to where if we really invest in the product, it could be fun and entertaining. Mm -hmm. I was talking about uh, talking about that with Taylor. How would we do the risk stream? Would we do it where you and I are at one, one of each other's houses or we have our individual you, streams? You could. Uh, we could do that, but we could also, like, I think set up cameras around that spot over there and we were just playing, like, a four-player risk game just on the same screen where we just pass the controller and we're, cool. we're in front of each other and then as it's going on like maybe you know mitch has to do stuff we can we can game cast too the actual mitch is that guy huh yeah. we'll get we can game cast it, so. but there's there's also like i mean the boys will know more than we do but i want to say that there is stuff where if the cameras are on us but then they can have the screen that we're looking at show like on there that's what i'm saying you can game cast versus just like so you can oh, is that have what that is? the actual like if you're playing on xbox we can have that majority on the screen and then like the bottom right would be or vice versa like if we were playing remote yes yeah yeah, yeah i'm yeah, down yeah. with that i would love to and i've said this a few times i would love to as we get farther into 2024 stream red dead redemption 2 a long just stream kinda, <laughs> just kind of get that, back and not, be, not, the whole, not just do it the whole way through but like pick up this time at the you know yeah you could you could however the setup would be but you just at your house set up like uh what is it twitch like just get a twitch channel <laughs> yeah, I'd have to look or it if up. we did bus into like a bus and twitch channel and you're just like i'm going live and ultimately you would press whatever buttons it is and then you just go live yeah and then be able to show me and then also show the yeah, like show your face and then i think the screen right Gamecast, whatever, whatever it's cool. called. That's cool. I mess with that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, just learn a new word. Gamecast. Yeah, but I, I now that we're on and listen, uh, blue, they don't have to accept me whatsoever at all. But now that it's a new year, a fresh start, I will be a lot more supportive of you in the future. Whether and you don't have to accept that. No, I really absolutely. Don't. Hey, listen. At the end of the day, like I know it's my actions that are going to build that trust back. But with the the year being over and seeing all that through, like a fresh start, it'll be a different approach. You know, a couple things. One, that's big of you. Two, I I can't wait to see how long that lasts. Bro, think about the years prior to that. I was battling for the Big Ten until I, like that took as much life as Nebraska no. losing. I remember three years ago when Michigan was in their first Big Ten championship. There's actually a clip someone posted it under that video. Yeah, of you of you saying go blue. Yeah. And I, I, I watched it over and over again thinking, man. Remember when so we were at HQ trying to flip Big Ev? Like, yeah, we had yeah, to get yeah. the whole Big Ten oh, yeah. fandom on board. Like, Was that last year or two years ago? Um, I, don't know, I think both. I mean, I, we were pro, I mean, we were as pro Big Ten as, as it got. I know. Both, both times you guys went to the Big Ten. Because I remember, no, that was last year because two years ago is when we were in Vegas. And I was having to watch the Big Ten basically win in the December games and then lose all the January games. Yeah, I wonder what the record is. This oh, are we gonna do? Jack just uh, pulled up. We don't got to do that, Jack. Let's go quickly. Let's go quickly through Nebraska and Michigan schedule. We've done this, man. You guys know. I don't think we've done twenty twenty four though. Yeah, we we did it we a little know, bit. I we know we did it. it. You tweeted about it, but we haven't really talked about. I just it. said we well, did their first six me. games. You, can you can't tell me they can't start six and zero. Oh, is we, all I said, and that to, is true. Like I get that that's funny, but that's also true. We can I, I can see. I can genuinely see five and one. Who's the loss to? Do you think? I think the only team you have to worry about in those first six games is Colorado, especially early. Especially early, and especially like this is the first year they're going to get the transfers. They're going to get more NIL money. They're going to be like, oh, we saw in the beginning of Colorado they could be legit. Do not sleep on Illinois. I mean, we did beat their ass, but they are a good fo football team. Purdue beat y'all last year too, yeah. No, no, we beat Purdue like thirty-one fourteen. Oh no shit. Yeah, it's when Jeff Sims came back in and the snappy fumble thing. They took it back to the house. I was that like, poor oh, bastard. No. He had a worse day than 73 yeah. for Washington. He had a worse season. I mean, he... go back to that. Hold down. Who do they play? They play anybody? I mean, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets a little hairy towards the end. You're right. But, but if you go 8 0. Oh, damn, it's at USC. 
That's what I'm saying against Ohio State. And you got new team identity, though. More belief. Right. Oh, yeah. You get, yeah. And I hope y'all beat Ohio State's ass. That would be so awesome to yeah. see. At the shoe, too. Yeah, I have bad memories at the shoe. Same. We got Same. whooped. Well, we did not get whooped, but it was close. Paxton Miller went off yeah. on us. Pull up, uh, pull up Michigan's 24 schedule. It's nasty. Yeah, you guys have a uh, tough schedule. I'm excited in a couple of years playing Tennessee. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. What is that? Is that next year? Uh, I think 2026. Oh, okay. Right? Or 2020. Texas week two. Texas USC week, week four. Two. Who's idle? Washington at Washington. But Penix will be gone. Yeah, but still, uh, Washington's a tough place to play. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That'd be a fun game to go to is Washington. That's who Idol is. Who? Yeah, who's Idol? The bye week. Oh, uh, that's what I was saying. Why does it just say bye week? Uh, hey, I wouldn't yeah. mess that up. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't. say bye week. Yeah, please have mercy on that's him. That's crazy. Yeah, but this is... I mean, you get past Texas, you're 11-0 Oregon. going against Ohio State. Oregon, you Ohio State, Texas. USC, Washington, Texas. Past week two. Texas, Arkansas State, USC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Week two, week September two. 7th. We can't go to it. Why not? Because we're going to Nebraska, Colorado. Oh, that sucks that they're the same weekend. Unique. Uh, but hey, Nebraska, Colorado is going to be. That'll be fun. Is that in Lincoln? Or yeah, in? Lincoln, yeah. That'll be awesome. There's uh, there's going to be, we're in the talks of it right now. We won't say everything, but the fall tour is going to be a little bit different next year, which we're excited about. A little more fluid, a little more, yeah, we'll just say that, a little more fluid. Hey, we need to let, we need to let Barstool know that too. Yeah. They might yeah, yeah, be locking yeah. shit in on us. Yeah. Is there any more? Yeah, maybe let everyone know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there any more college football talk? We want to get into before we go to this the playoff picture because the first week of the playoffs is yeah. up. Anybody got anything? Coop, is there anything you want to say to defend yourself? Because you the last time you were in the mic, it was a tough look. No, he the, 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 he he got it. He got his up. He'll get it next time. All right, fair enough. He'll get it next time. That's tough. You just got just got canceled by Will. <laughs> All right, playoff picture. He threw him in for a series. Yeah, got to get it. We saw he obviously needs more coaching. Right. Listen, kid, you made mistakes, but they're not, they're fixable mistakes. We're protecting you. <laughs> Protect you and the players around yeah, you. Yeah, so the NFL. Pull the pull the uh playoff picture up. Can we can we give a little sneak peek? Can we tip off who's gonna be on next week? Yeah, we can give a little tip off. Yeah, go for it. Like say the name? Yeah, present the name. But don't just say the name. Give a little give me some seasoning on that. Give a little like don't WWE it, but Get these people excited. Okay. How many natties has he won? Two. He's won two national titles. Okay. He sent several people into outer space. Nice. With his... Arm. Arm. This has turned more into a riddle, but I, I kind of dig it. I know. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to like... He's won... A prestigious trophy in college. Yeah. He's won some hardware. He's won in the NFL. More than two Pro Bowls. He is from Florida. Yeah. He's of royalty. Of royalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's built like uh he's built like give it away. He's built like an action figure. Yeah. I'm trying to think um, of that Mortal Kombat character, the horse. I don't know much about Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that's all we'll say. So we're not gonna say the name. No, I go. Hey, say, I go. Say, <laughs> I go. Say the name, but just put some spice on it. And he goes in this crazy riddle. <laughs> it's like, who am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, listen. AFC picture: Baltimore Ravens. They have a bye. The Houston Texans, who won. The AFC South, after the Tennessee Titans defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars, are playing Joe Flacco and the Cleveland Browns. Kansas City will have a rematch 
in the continental United States against the Miami Dolphins. The Buffalo Bills will take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin, my God. Uh, let's talk about the AFC picture real quick. Who do we see winning? Who's going to play Baltimore next week? I would love to see... Um, give me give me Houston, Cleveland first. Just tell me who right, you got Houston, that. Cleveland. I would love to see Flacco go all the way. However, I think Houston gets him. I like. Uh, I think C.J. Stroud is special. And I think you got him, especially in the fourth quarter. I like... I like putting my money on C.J. Stroud. So I got Houston beating Cleveland. I'll agree with that. I think Houston's got to get off its line. They are going to do pretty decent, but Cleveland's defense line is pretty incredible. Their pass defense is really good. I think Joe Flacco, as electric as he's been, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, throwing the interceptions, those just count for more when you get to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And I think C.J. Stroud is one of those cats in the making right now. And he's ne- one of those fucking uh, dudes Nico to make Collins, it. like the way he was playing last Michigan week. Michigan go like, blue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I somebody said that too, like while it was uh while he was like trucking the fuck out of somebody. Uh-huh. He was getting those yards after catch. But yeah, I just think that they're firing at the right time. So I agree. Jay's healthy. Slowick's yeah. dialing it up for him, the OC. Coach Ryan's like they have the momentum going into this game. I know. And if honestly, I feel like Coach Not that Ryan. The Browns don't, because they've like kind of made you know, lemonade out of shit the way that their quarterbacks have went down and Flacco's kind of came in. It's so hard to make lemonade out of shit. It's yeah. Like one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like if, like, if it wasn't for Stefanski, Coach Ryan wins the Coach of the Year award. Yeah. I mean, right? yeah, those are both. They both have, have had incredible seasons. Give me an awesome game. I think that the game will come down to the wire. Next game, Kansas City versus... The, wait, does anybody feel different? Houston over Cleveland? I think Cleveland's defense is really, really good. They, they uh, are. And I think C.J. Stroud might have a tough time against them. I think it would be sick to see Joe Flacco back in Baltimore. Yeah, but I don't see him going to Baltimore because, in my opinion, Miami beats Kansas City at Kansas City. Really? Yeah, I think this is it. Oh, that one's coming. <laughs> yeah, I, but th- if, 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 it, if it's going to happen any year, it'd be this year. Said that last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... We we know that Will's takes have been t- like his long term takes have been tough. Um. All right. So you think Cleveland's going to beat Houston, Mitch? Everybody else is on uh, Houston. Let's go Kansas City, Miami. Will already said Miami. I'm going to actually take Kansas City in this. I think it's not so much about Kansas City being better than Miami. I think Miami has had some crucial injuries with their two defensive ends getting hurt. Yeah. I think that. Fuck. Kansas City's been in this position so many times that the moment's not going to be too big to them, even though they know their team's not as good as it have been in years past. So for that reason, I'm going to have to take Kansas City in this one. And they're they're vets in the playoffs. They're vets in the playoffs. They, they, know they understand the process. Is. They know what time it is. In can yeah, in Kansas City, these fans like these fans just know like, hey, we know the playoffs are coming up. They like already, they've been waiting for this for a while. Yeah, waiting for a while. And of all like, It'll be an exciting game. As disappointing as Kansas City's been this year, they're the three seed. Not, right. It's not crazy. I know. I know. I hate that uh, Kelsey didn't get the his 8,000-yard season. He was 16 yards out from it. That's crazy, man. I think streak is over. Yeah, I think he's, that was the longest streak for a tight end. Yeah. Yeah. This we, Before the season, people were saying, like, if Kelsey gets the 1,000-yard season, this cements him as the GOAT. Yeah. But I still there's still an argument for it, obviously, but crazy. All right, does anybody – who JP, who you got? I'm rocking with the Dolphins. Dolphins. Mitchie. Kansas City. You know where he's going. Jackie. I want to be with the Dolphins, but you make good points defense. They're, they the are. They've been struggling. Limping. Yeah. So I think Casey. Go. I got Casey. Dolphins. I think Tua gets it done. All right. All right. All right. Buffalo's going to mop Pittsburgh. Yep. I think Buffalo is the most dangerous team in the AFC picture. Yeah. And it's crazy, like, you look at the two seed, you're like, well, they're the two seed. It's like, okay, you didn't watch ball then because they were pronounced dead in October. This team had no life. They fire their OC. They finally get back on track. Uh, get Buffalo versus Miami, Buffalo played bad. Josh Allen played bad. Mm-hmm. So it was a pick in, the, a pick in the end zone, another pick, and gets sacked for a, a fumble that's a turnover. And their defense was without Matt Milano, without a couple of key players that had injuries sustained earlier in the year, and still held that high-flying Miami offense to 14 points. That is, that's who they're going to, Josh Allen is going to make big plays for them. That's going to get them their wins. 
but the defense is going to keep them in position to win. Do we know the uh, injury report on TJ Watt? Third grade MCL. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Way, I thought it was going to be way worse. We were talking about it in the yeah, plane. Yeah. I thought it was going to be way worse. Sprained MCL. He'll be out there. He's Yeah, he's a war daddy. Yeah, he'll be out there. He's a war daddy. But I think Buffalo handles him. On the NFC, you got uh, Tampa Bay, Philly at Tampa Bay. All right, I feel like we might be on the same page with this. Somebody count to three say the, and say who's going to win. Three, two, one. Tampa Bay. All right, perfect. I think so, too. Uh, and again, we don't. I don't know the injury report. How's Jalen doing? They haven't come out with like much. He dislocated his, his throwing hand. hand. He is finger. They're going to keep it on the low, though. They will keep it on Bro, the low. He cannot. I'm Man, telling they, you, they he will not be able to throw the rock. Finger not How about A.J. Brown? They still haven't put out anything with him. Though. Yeah, those will all be on the low. It wasn't an ACL. I know that full, so. But I don't think he comes back. He had a players-only meeting before the game. Really? A.J. did? Allegedly. Held a players only meaning like the day of the game yeah they've just kind of they've not been the they've not been that philadelphia team especially late in the season like they were last year yeah it's they been just a, got whooped by the giants too man not the did they have a whole lot to, oh yeah were they still playing for the one seed if they would have won would they have been the uh or would they have won the east they, oh, well, yeah not the one seed but won the east yeah i think i think tampa bay man at tampa then the second game you got the rams matt stafford Travis. does anybody have philly does anybody have philly Mitch. Okay, whatever. Mitch is Philly. Let's move Matt on. Stafford traveling back to Detroit. Round one of the playoffs. In Detroit. NFC North champs. Jared Goff against his old team. Stafford against his old team. Yeah. Who you got? This team, this is the best storyline. This is the best storyline in uh in the playoffs right now. Who's gonna win this game? Two quarterbacks to play for the opposite team. I, it's, let me work through this in my head a little bit because I feel like the guy with the most to prove is Jared Goff because Matthew Stafford goes to the Rams and gets his Super Bowl mm -hmm. to the point where it's like Jared Goff, he wasn't the answer. They were right to get, get rid of him. Detroit should not be the four seed. Are they the four seed or the three seed? Three Maybe seed. Five. They're the three seed. They should be, they should have been fighting for that one seed against San Francisco in week 18, but because of the refs against uh, the Cowboys, it was a bad deal. I think the Rams win this. I think the Rams are going to win this, and I think it's going to be a good game, but I think Dan Campbell, as much as you love him for the risks he takes in the playoffs, like I, I just if he takes that kind of risk and has the opportunity to bite him in the ass, has the opportunity to give you greatness. It's a live, live by the sword, die by the sword situation, but Stafford, they got hot quick. They were kind of similar to the Bills where everyone's like, okay, yeah, that's the Niners division. Don't worry about anybody else in there now. Like, the, the Rams have, like, come back in. I think they are. I think McVay's got a shot to be coach of the year. That's I mean, they weren't talked about at all yeah. before the season started. And they've kind of, like, you know, they've had a lot of, like, uh, ups and downs throughout the season because they started off what? They started off, like, was it one in five? Or, no, not one in five. They started off bad, though, and then started rattling off a, a winning streak in the back half of the year, similar to yeah. uh, you guys in 2019, whatever that was. Um, similar to the Bills this year. Yeah. So I think McVay's got a shot to be coach of the year, man. I, I hate this game because I want both teams to win. I know. Like, I want to see Detroit go a little bit. I want to see the Rams go a little bit. Like, I would love to see the Rams go as a sixth seed, like, go all the way to the Super Bowl. So... Yeah, Whoever I'll, wins this game, I'm going to be pulling forward to get to the uh, NFC Championship against San Fran because I want San Fran to go too, and that's like another team I'm kind of rooting for. So I, I have no clue. I have no clue. Yeah. I have no clue who I want to win. Who I think wins? I think Detroit. I think they got the horses. I want Detroit to win. I think the Rams win. We're split, boys. What do we got, JP? I want the Rams. I got the Rams. I think McVay. I'm not going to bet against see, Yeah, McVay. I know. And it would be sick, like, them going to Detroit. Because you just know schematically, like, they're coming with everything. And I think Detroit might be, like, too fired up, too emotional. Yeah. And they might have, like, an emotional is, is dump. Is Laporta out? I don't know. That's another injury you got to think about. Laporta's get by, out though. here. And shout out Sam Laporta for, as a rookie, making the Pro Bowl. As a rookie. That's big time. 
Great. Yeah, Sam, Sam Laporta, outside shot. That'll be on the low. Like, now that it's playoff time, we won't know it, at nothing about these injuries. Um, but yeah, what's the next game? You got uh, Green Bay traveling to Dallas. Is this the year that Dallas wins one? No. You don't think so? No. You think Green Bay gets them? I think Green Bay wins this game. I think LaFleur and Love win this game against the Cowboys. It's going to come down to a situational ball that the Cowboys have proven time and time again they can't overcome. Yeah. And I think I think the Cowboys lose to the Green Bay Packers. I want Green Bay to win, but I think Dallas, I think Dallas takes care of business for the first time. I, I just do them at home at they're a different fucking team, man. Yeah, like they're they are so tough at home. I, and I do. I think they fumbled the bag in round two, but I want Green Bay to win because of the staff that we know over there. Uh, but I think Dallas wins. Got uh Rich Eisen in twenty minutes. Okay, but for that's for ten minutes. So if you guys, we can keep it going if you guys um, want. All right, we're gonna be doing a Super Bowl predictions here. Have you resolved to take your workout game to the next level this year? Unlock more in 2024 with gold standard one hundred percent whey protein powder. By Optimum Nutrition with 24 grams of protein that supports muscle and workout recovery in more than 20 easy mixing flavors. It's easy to meet your daily protein goals with gold standard 100% whey. Build your routine. Unlock your potential. Available at stores nationwide. Taylor, what is your Super Bowl prediction? I believe the San Francisco 49ers will be playing the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. And I have the San Francisco 49ers winning that Super Bowl. I We had talked about it last night about the Baltimore Ravens, how it'd be great to have a hardball year here. I think that would be awesome. I would not be upset about that at all. I just think the way Buffalo's kind of fought through that adversity, put themselves in the position, win when they had to, and they have the talent at quarterback, it's just their year to get it done. Especially with the way Kansas City's kind of played the back half of the year. They're... I think they're the team. I think they're the team that comes to the AFC. And I think as long as San Francisco stays healthy and they don't run into a situation they did last year against the Eagles in the NFC Championship, the 49ers should absolutely go and win uh, this Super Bowl. They have the talent. They have the coaching staff. They have the players. Willie, who do you got? Strong pick. One that I would agree with. But just to be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mix it up a little bit. The only thing I'd change, like, okay, so I hate choosing both one seeds, but I do think Baltimore and San Fran, like them repeating in the Super Bowl would be an iconic Super Bowl. I love Buffalo. I kind of, I'm like rooting for Buffalo to go. But again, to be different from yours, my chaos Super Bowl. My chaos Super Bowl is Give me the Rams coming out of the NFC. Ooh. That is chaos. I think Buffalo. It's hard to look I don't past think, Buffalo. I don't, yeah, it's hard to get past Buffalo. So Buffalo wins. Like, let's just say, you know, if Kansas City wins, it'll be Kansas City at Buffalo. I think Buffalo wins that one because it'll be at Buffalo. But again, if Miami were to upset them, Miami would go to Baltimore. And then Houston would travel to Buffalo. I think Buffalo wins at Buffalo. And then I think with all that momentum going into that AFC championship game, um, I think Buffalo gets it done against Baltimore. I think the hardest game for Baltimore is going to be that divisional game. If they can win the divisional game, they can go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, because well, obviously the, the week works. off will be week yeah. off will be interesting with them. It's proven 2019, Titans yeah. versus Ravens. That and they are built different this year they are. and Lamar he's got that different type of swag about him that different type of focus that whatever was happening in 19 on the roster like vets will be able to speak to it I'm not saying anything happened but they now have that experience of having the bye week Lamar having the year that he's had probably he'll probably get the MVP um and you can just tell he's got a different focus about him so I you know it'll probably be it's like the likelihood of the one seed versus one seed, Baltimore or San Fran. I love Buffalo. Like, I like your pick with San Fran, Buffalo. But the chaos one would be uh, Buffalo and the Rams. I could see the Rams getting getting sneaky, getting frisky throughout the playoffs. Yeah. Just kind of being the road dog. Yeah, I agree. 
Because if they win, they'll go to San Fran. Mm. They have they they're familiar with San Fran. And if they happen to pull that one off, they're playing who? Tampa Bay or Dallas? Yeah. Literally you just gotta get through San Fran because I feel like the the three teams to me in the NFC are San Fran, Detroit, and the Rams. Those are the three teams Correct. that logically yeah, in my head, those guys can have a shot at going to the Super Bowl. I agree. Detroit and the Rams are going to be like the best game to watch this weekend. Yeah. The, the 49ers are just the big bad wolf. Like they're just. And they are fucking, you know, they're ready to go. And I hope, I hope they win the whole thing. Like and we you see the clips of Kittle. Of the show on the Niners. When, when you see Kittle being like, I will be back here. I will be back here. And then like you see him during the NFC championship last year, like still trying to hype up the boys when you know all hope is lost. And you see the clips of him with, he's all mic'd up being like, boys, we got it. Like all we need is one play, like truly fighting for a lost cause. When you have no quarterbacks left, you can only run the ball. They're stacking the box. Like that kind of passion to me is like, I want it so bad for San Francisco. Yeah, Christian right. McCaffrey has I'm been, to put a future has been a right guy. San Fran. Dog, like I just you're right, and they were there last year. They had the squad. They, and they were going to win it last year. Fucking quarterback. Like to me, Kittle winning a Super Bowl is the motiva- motivating factor for me when I make these picks. Like he deserves it. McCaffrey deserves it. I mean, all those guys in the team deserve it. Trent Williams, I don't know him, but I have so much respect. I'm a fan of Trent Williams so much. It. But it's what's that? So he don't deserve it. <laughs> I just think like of all the teams in this bracket, the team that deserves it the most that should have already had one is built to win it is San Francisco. And I hope they win this. And I also hope that Shanahan gets that monkey up his back of just getting as far as the championship game. Yes. Yes, bro. And if you do go happen to go down quarterbacks this year, like let the boys throw the rock back there. Yeah. Because if they, if they do, and it's like, Hey, we're in this position again, like fuck it boys, backyard ball. Yeah. Longest yard, Adam Sandler type shit. Yeah. Damn. That was, Yeah. Yeah, Niners to win it all. I love that. But chaos. But we also love chaos. Yeah, we love chaos. Take the Niners out of it. I would take the Niners out of it. I would love to see the Lions win it all. Yeah, right. I would love to see the Lions win. I have to make a list of teams I'm like pulling for. Yeah. Pecking order. Because one would be San Fran. Two would probably be Buffalo. Three would be Rams. Take a notes, Coop. Four would be Lions. I'll have to look at the rest. Pull it back up. Let me hit you. It's really almost a team that like every team you, there's a reason you kind of would want to see them win. Maybe except Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. Not Dallas. And like, I, like I wouldn't, I would love it for Kansas city for like Travis and you know, some of those guys, but like, I, I wouldn't like, I'm not going to be heartbroken if they don't win it. Like they've kind of had theirs. Every other uh, team has a story. Yeah. Um, The number one team for me is San Francisco. The number two team is Buffalo. Then, then the Lions. Then maybe Miami. I would love to see Miami get hot. Yeah. But them being injured and stuff really hurts them. Yeah, they still have the firepower on the edges. And they had it too. God, they had the firepower on the edges. Because their, their interior is good. Christian Wilkins, yeah. right? He's a, he's a stud. Yeah, Clemson kid. I get it, JP. I get it. But still, stud. Like, it makes some good moves in the, in the inside of that pocket. So... But yeah, that's the, so we've got both of us on our true takes taking San Francisco. Chaos take, you took who winning it? Out of Buffalo and the Rams, it doesn't matter. It's a toss up. Like, just, just pick one. Give me the Rams. All right. My chaos pick, I'll take Buffalo in your scenario. I think it's hard to say chaos pick for the two seed. Yeah, but, but then again, they just got, they, the yeah, it would have been the so two you're right, seed or the seven seed. seed. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, that's you want Josh to win one. There's one team on here that's like, yes, they'll if you were to put all your money on something, you had to put all your money. There's one team you look at and you're like, that's your Super Bowl winner. Everybody else is like, you know, you the next Baltimore, on the list is Baltimore, Fran. obviously, because of the one seed in the AFC. They've been playing out of their minds, but every, like everybody else is like, Yeah, I could see them doing something. Yeah. Aside from <laughs> aside from Dallas and Pittsburgh, right? Um Oh, Let's yeah. talk body armor. Busting with the boys is brought to you by body armor. Body armor zero sugar is the new zero sugar sports drink from our friends at body armor with no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. No BS. Whether you're looking to stay hydrated or recovering from a long weekend, 
Body Armor Zero Sugar has got you covered. It has great tasting flavors like fruit punch and lemon lime. My favorite lately is the fruit punch. It gets me through those tough days when we were in Montana, a little dehydrated in the duck blind. It was Body Armor Zero Sugar that got me through it. Wedding planning, workouts, late night recordings, etc. cetera. Um, it's available in stores nationwide, but you can head on over to Body Armor Store on Amazon and get yours today. Our guest that's coming today for next week's episode is bringing us father. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right. Um, Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? This is the only thing we have left. All right. Twisted question of the day. Twisted question is brought to you by Twisted T. One ad to another. The this. smoothest hard. Let's redo it. Take the opposite. Regroup, regroup, regroup. Yep. The smoothest hard iced tea out up? there. Uh, he, he made it sound like noon. Perfect for tailgates. Perfect for this win these winter seasons. Literally, next week in Nashville, JP brought it up. We're looking at single digit weather. Crack open a couple of twisted teas and just look into the absolute heart and soul of winter and just enjoy your time, dude. Keep it twisted with twisted tea. Kick off your 2024 like we all will when that winter hits with a twisted tea today. The twisted question is brought to you by Mitch Carsley, who has outsourced his question to Reddit. From Reddit. Reddit. Baba. You know, the best part about it being so cold is you just buy a pack and then just let it sit outside. That's your fridge. That is a nice winter move. Yeah. That's a winter move. All right. I got to roll, Mitch. So what do you got, baby? All right. What's the question of the week? Would you rather be ugly but smell amazing or very handsome and beautiful but you smell like shit? Say that again. Would you rather be ugly but smell amazing or handsome slash beautiful but you stink? How ugly are we talking? Are we talking like Sloth and the Goonies? Like we're talking like ugly, ugly. Like SpongeBob and Patrick, you caught the ugly. <laughs> that is smelly though. SpongeBob and Patrick season one we, being at Sandy's house for the first time being dried out. Great ugly. looking and stinky. Smelly boy? Yeah. Because I could just be spiritual. Be like, oh, I'm just a man of the earth. McConaughey style. I'm Russell Brand. Yeah. I like that. I was going to go the opposite, but I like that take. I'm going to go, I'm going to go extremely good looking and smelly. Give me the B.O. Fuck it. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. I, you just ultimately take showers and it hold off for probably like 20 minutes. Yeah, I think it's an everlasting stench. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. An ugly, for ugly the, For the tough. sake of this question, yeah, I would probably have to. Yeah, just give me great looking. It just kind of depends like what you deem as ugly. You literally said that it's Beauty like is in the eye of the... Yeah. Like, are we talking ugly like we're overweight? That's the thing. I like, just, I don't know. Like, are we let's Stephen, say not are we over, Stephen Hawking? Let's say ugly. No, that's, I mean. You're not overweight. This is, this is ugly when you Google it on Google Images. I mean, third row There's down. upside to being ugly, I mean. Yeah, third row down, funny one from the animals. Yeah. Like, that's not, I mean, he ugly, but he, you can work with that. Oh, no. No, you can't work with that. Yeah, it's tough. Where are you guys going? I think I'm choosing the ugly, but smell good because there's a lot of cases out there where people beat the odds, and you are one of them. <laughs> Walked right into it, <laughs> but exactly. That's where I'm going my whole life, man. I think I might, I might ride with JP there too. I think you hit it on I the I can head. buy that. Being the earthy guy, though, you, I know. Can, you can swing that and be like, I've been out in the woods for months. Like, I don't believe in aluminum and deodorant, you know? Yeah. I'm just not that guy. You know, I'm all natural. I'm primal. They're like, I've yeah, been dating primal. you for two years. You don't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> There's something, and women like a little musk, too. I know it smells like shit, but some, you, know, you might find a little honey who's into that. <laughs> another earthy girl. Yeah, another earthy yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> so you don't even notice. Oop. I would rather smell good. There's nothing worse than smell someone good. that smells bad. Yeah, y'all saw the video. Come on, man. Everyone asked what the fragrance is. No, I, I agree. I mean, that it sucks to smell bad. But... Like, people that don't wear deodorant and smell bad. 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 It's tough. It's tough to be around. Yeah, you, you would be, be tough around. to be around. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be. It's like a... I'd rather smell good. 
I'm sticking with we that. We know. Yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Guys got to look in the mirror a little bit, huh? <laughs> like, what kind of ugly are we talking? Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Coop. Oh. Busting balls. Busting balls. Busting shots. You got anything else? I think that's it. It's all the ads. It's all the talks. Great episode, boys. Well, there is one more thing. Yeah. Possibly Kirk Herbstreet joining on Zoom. Possibly. I haven't heard oh, from Oh, yeah, Steven. yeah. What's the, what's the skinny on old Kirk? I put Steven in touch with Kirk and then re-reached out. Kirk said, I'm down, blah, blah, blah. And then I assume Steven's going to take over that. So Hopefully he's responding if to Steven. Kirk Herbstreet is not on this Zoom, Steven Bond is the reason why it didn't work out. Or if right. Kirk didn't respond to him. Keep that in. <laughs> hey, hey, and, right. and also one last congratulations on Big National Thank Champions. you, boys. What a day to be alive. We, we didn't even get into the fantasy championship. That's just water under the bridge, boys. Can't wait for next year. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Another asterisk. It's going to be... Another asterisk. It's like two negatives make a positive. <laughs> All right, boys, big hugs, tiny kisses. Please subscribe. Get the merch. Buy this champ shirt. It'll be gone in 24 hours probably, so get it. Don't ever talk about being a fan again, bro. (laughs) All right, uh, boys, we uh, got off the episode, got done with this episode. We're getting ready to release it at 8 p.m. tonight. And uh, your boy was on Rich Eisen for 10 minutes. And during the process, I look back and Will's trying to get my attention. He's like, something about fired. I couldn't tell what was going on. And as he's saying that, uh, Rich Eisen mentions, I don't know if you're hearing what the producers are saying in my ear, but Mike Vrabel has been relieved of his duties at the Tennessee Titans. Now listen, you saw the initial reaction on Rich Eisen if you follow that show. We wanted to pop back in on here to give our reaction to the whole thing because not only has Vrabel been massive to the Tennessee Titans, he's one of the boys. He's been on the show. He literally, as much as you hate to admit it, is one of the guys that truly put this show on the map Oh, with yeah. the cutting his yeah, piece yeah. off and all that. And so... God, that's true. Why did you have to bring that up? I know. It's just an opportunity for us to tip the cap to old man Vrabes because we can go about how we feel about the decision. If you, I've been talking, but if you want to go first. What was the reaction on Eisen? I do remember I was going over. The, was, yeah. Fired. The reaction was just taken back because through the year, I think like midway through the season, you, you and I would kind of have conversations and I would bring up, like, you think Vrabes think he's out of here? And you would be like, there's no way. And, I, and then I would eventually just agree with you because I, I, I thought the same thing. Right. And you finish the season, you finish on a high note with Derek playing the way he did, his possible last game. Tannehill getting a win in his last game, beating the Jaguars, taking them out of this AFC South. You think all the question marks of if Mike Vrabel is the guy or not the guy, this is, that has answered all the questions. And I so, know, it never felt like, because we would have those conversations. And even a couple days ago or after uh, the Titans ended up going, what, 6-11? and 11? Yeah, ten eleven on the year. Charles, like you think Vrabe safe, and I was like, I I was kind of doing the same thing. I was like, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a nothing's gonna no happen, right? Just because, like, you look at everything he's put together in his tenure with the Titans, he's crushed it. He's got like a Coach of the Year nod. He's he's you guys went to AFC Championship. We were eleven and five, twelve and five, I think. The one seed in the last couple of years have been uh, up and down. In this past year, it's kind of like. Definitely felt like more of a rebuild because they let go J. Rob in the middle of the year last year, warranted, justified, whatever. Um, it's it felt then like if you're going to get rid of that regime, then at the end of last season would have been the season to do it mm-hmm. to retain him, and then you kind of go about it this year. And again, he's got a proven track record of like being like he's a championship style uh, coach. I mean, at, at times, of course, it's tough to play for him, but he like he understands what it takes to get it done. Like. You know, I know I've been on different teams, and uh, Vrabe always had the way he had everything structured. I know some with the Patriots, uh, some he kind of did his own thing, but he always clearly defined, like, how you were going to get win, what was going to happen, what the standard was, what the culture was going to be. He was never scared of any conversation. He never beat around the bush with anybody. You always knew where you stood. He's just one of those guys where, like, you understand why he's been able to fast-track to a head coach. So it just always felt like, you know, there was no chance of him of this happening. Yeah, and you brought up a good point, too, of Rabel telling the team, essentially, like, manifesting how you're going to win the game. Yeah. And it's one thing to do that. It's in a whole other position to call the shot internally, and when you watch how the game plays out, it plays out exactly like Rabel would say. Hey, they're going to do this. At some point in the game, this right. is going to happen, and then we're going to win because of X, Y, and Z. Right. And it was kind of like, you know, how is he just know? And it's a guy just understanding the game, understanding you know, how to connect to players, how to critically 
speak with players and like we know we all talk about 2018 we all hated raves oh, yeah. we thought he was the worst he was he just came in bull in a china shop attitude and you're just like yo what the fuck is going on man and then through the years it he had adapted. like the glimmers of like yo this dude's awesome like why he done yes because he would have those moments where you're like yeah. yo maybe he's not a piece of shit yeah you yeah, know yeah, yeah. i say yeah. that jokingly but like maybe he's not that guy that like we're all everyone's kind of making him out to be and slowly but surely like 19 20 21 like you're like, oh, this dude's a this dude's a cat that you kind of want to be around. You kind of want to play for. He's like a like, he's turning into a player's coach. Mm -hmm. That you're like, yo, we know Rabes is gonna get us right. So I, I said it on Instagram. I don't know about what you said in your video, but I, I think this is a mistake. I think I think the Titans made a big, big mistake. And I don't know if it's because we're getting older, so you understand a little bit more about what happens in the NFL. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time I've seen a fire where I feel like. Okay, there, there. I feel like there's some Game of Thrones colluding in the background that took place here. Yeah, definitely a power move. I mean, somebody like power struggle. Yeah, at the top, it's got to. Yeah, it's like there's this weird cloud of how everything's going in the facility. Like we, you know, we can't tip off if we had, even though we've been tipping off if we're gonna have on next week. But it was like there. Uh, the difference in the building or the difference of just the vibe of the team from years past to like specifically like this year. Um, I don't know. It's like, yeah, Rand came in, and I guess Rand was probably Amy's hire. I think is that that's like, that's like public information. Yeah, um, Rand was Amy's hire, but you'd think the vacancy of the GM job, or like when J. Rob got fired, you would assume Vrabe goes back to the table, tries, gets whatever could probably control the roster decisions because you kind of yeah. know where it's all at, like where all the collapses kind of happened, like with the regime of J. Rob, and then Rand comes in. And I don't necessarily know how the dynamic was. It felt like the, the, the dynamic wasn't always, like, collaborative or just didn't feel like much of anything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just reading Twitter, it seemed like Vrabel wanted, you know, assistant GMs or guys that were, like, on the staff to have more clarity in what their roles and responsibilities were and giving up what that control looked like of the roster. Maybe he didn't feel like Rand was competent enough to do it or like, hey, let's hire somebody to help facilitate these these decisions, these collaborative decisions on the roster. Um, maybe Amy wanted like Rand to do it. Maybe there was like the power struggle of going back and forth of disagreement. And then maybe the options started to float up of like trading or firing or other options if Vrabe or whoever wasn't going to play ball that way. And then ultimately probably led to this if Amy's like, hey, I was just one new fresh, a new fresh perspective because you know, I mean, you can assume how some of those conversations probably go if you're not aligned or in line with it. Yeah. This is as great as Vrabe is, too. Like, there were a couple years where when it could have fallen apart and it didn't, and it's hats off to him for like cultivating the way he's always been able to cultivate the, uh, uh, the dynamic in the building. Um, but, you know, there were always those, uh, those question marks, too, of like hiring more in house, like not having a lack of going beyond what was in the building to bring in coordinators or assistants. Like, who knows how many of those conversations were being had about, like, hey, let's change the decision up here and there and how much either Vrabe was giving or trying to be like, no, let's do this. And they probably just butt heads. And Vrabe was like, no, we're not doing a trade or anything like that. Like, you have, have to fire, fire me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just don't. The thing that has kind of been brought up multiple times is the idea that Vrabel, this is all speculation. It's all allegedly. But, like, Vrabel thought Rand was incompetent. At, at being able to control the entire roster. Yeah. To me, I think that's a crazy... That's It's wild to think that only, like, truly the people inside the building would know because, you know, there's a lot of transitions or, like, guys leaving, guys getting on IR, guys being brought in and brought out on a weekly basis in the NFL. But how do you understand if a guy knows who to bring in and evaluate talent until after yeah. a full off season? I just don't... I don't get it. And what I've been told in the Titans camp is... The, the difference between John Robinson and Rand are like polar opposites, complete 180s. Rand and personality I'm, wise, yeah, neither one's yeah. better better than the other. But however, Rand has, at least how it's been explained to me, is much more relaxed, much more free flowing, not so players much of guy. a yeah, player's guy, not much of so much of like I'm the boss and everything. And then J Rob, as I knew when I was there, it was like one of those things where literally he was evaluating the landscapers how they were cutting the grass he had a, he had you know what kind of food was being brought in he literally every minute detail he had his hand in everything, he had his hand in everything. Yeah. so i don't know if that makes rave seeing it completely different side think oh maybe this guy's a little too lackluster i really don't know but i do know that the tennessee titans fan base owes a big thank you to mike Rabel. that dude 
you know, we talked about 18, that was tough, but the, the years we all got to have, whether playing or watching, of being a part of something that was truly special in Nashville, Tennessee, is something that we need to look at Mike Vrabel and say thank you for, because that's a dude that without him, that culture, the, um, the work through adversity with all the injuries, like in 2021, where we literally set a record, a league record of guys being brought in and out, of guys playing in NFL games and still getting the one seed. Those type of things don't happen mm -hmm. without culture and then implementing a simple enough game plan for guys that are new enough. And that goes and falls in the back of Mike Vrabel. I have no doubt. Like I, I it's like, I feel bad that Mike is not uh, the Titans head coach anymore, but also a piece of me is like, fuck yeah, Mike, because he's going to double dip. He gets fired. His contract is in. Now he's going to go to one of these vacant head coaching jobs. And he is going to be a cat that is highly sought after get paid even more than he was before. And from a financial standpoint, this is going to be a massive benefit for Mike. The bad news is, I mean, both of his kids are out of, like, one's in college and one's older, but he's got to up uproot the family. He's got to move. He's got to do all that and essentially start over the process of implementing the culture he did to the Titans. Where I'm worried is, is where are the Titans headed? And it's so easy to speculate and be kind of nervous about that because there's not a head coach. We haven't gone through a draft. We have, there's so many holes in the team that there's a lot of fear when I especially look at a guy like Jack where it's like, there's a lot of fear. It's like, now they're going back 10 years. Now they're going back to, it's like 2014, 2015, you have an abysmal roster and no leadership. That's kind of the, the fear, it seems like, throughout the fan bases of, of Nashville. And I, we don't have an answer for that. We really don't. But what I do know is, is that Mike is uh, one of the best head coaches in the NFL. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think what's surprising it too is like, if you know you have one of the better coaches in the NFL why are you not doing absolutely everything possible to make sure that that next GM hire is a like collaborative piece with kind of the vision or working with coach Vrabel? Um, if you're like betting on Vrabel in the long run, you know what I mean? And if you're not, then I, I don't understand like why the decision or yeah, I don't know, man. I think you're right about uh game of Thrones. It's like there's definitely the political element because this has I don't think it has nothing to do with this coaching ability. No, this has got collusion written all yeah, over. Yeah, this it. is all about like the that power struggle at the top, like who's going to be the shot caller and what kind of disagreement, like not being aligned in some of the front office aspects. I I think that that's pretty much all came down to, and then Amy ultimately has a say in it. Yeah, and I don't think I mean obviously the way we're speaking about it is like Vrabe must have got got in some sort of way. I'm not saying maybe Vrabe wasn't going to get the amount of power he wanted. He goes, all right, I'm going to dip then. True. Because you, so you, you truly never know. You truly never know the truth. The people that were in that building all know pieces of the truth, but don't know the full entire story yeah. unless there's an actual sit down conversation between all of them. I so it sucks, man. And you talk about, uh, yeah, the, the Titans, this chapter, I think it's crazy. It's like, it was what Rabel from 18 to 23, 20, this 23, 24 season. Now that book is, like, truly close. Truly close. Derek's gone. You were in that book. I got to I was be a in little that piece book. in that book. Yeah, you got a you, you were got a like chapter. you like you, Derek Henry, Tannehill. I mean, a lot of guys, man. Iraq, Terrell, Bo, Casey, Jarrell, West, Kevin Byard, Kevin Byard, Kenny Vaccaro, Delaney in Delaney. the beginning. Like that book, that generation of Titans is officially close. Any, I mean, he helped. I mean, busting with the boys was under it was under his watch. Yeah, busting with the boys. You can't talk about that timeline of the Tennessee Titans franchise without mentioning busting with the boys. Yeah, yeah, busting with the boys is in there. Is in that little book. Yeah, God, it's just crazy, man. Jack, out, let's tap in. How we feeling, brother? I know you saw the tweet and you started. You had to get up. You started losing your mind. You we were started... literally upstairs and I heard, "Are you fucking kidding me?" That was yeah, Jack. Yeah, I mean. Emotions are starting to level back out. Overreact right now. You can over. You have a space and a moment to overreact. I mean, I, I see m the majority of people on Twitter right now on the internet are are in agreement that this is a, a stupid firing. Um, my brother-in-law Chase Teichman, he goes, "This is the first firing I've seen in Titans history where I don't agree with it at all. Like I don't even see the direction it was headed." Not. I, I think that sums it up in the in the perfect way. I do understand the opposite side of the coin where it's. Out of the last 24 games, he's only won six. And so I get that, but that's not Mike Vrabel, though. Like, we've had since, Taylor, since you've been gone and, and a countless amount of others, the, the old line's been depleted. We've been running through different quarterbacks. We've lost our whole identity as a receiver core. Derek's been in and out. 
it's just it's tough when you try and put a blame on one person when he's the same guy who set the NFL record for starting the most active players of all time in a single season when we had the one seed. And that was it, 96 guys were on a one current active roster. Like, yeah, good point. I, there, there's hardly any coach maybe in existence that will ever coach again that can put that on a resume. So I do understand the last two years have not been going according to plan, but it's like, how are we just going to jump ship like this when there's no hope in sight that we're going to find even a coach with half the capability that he has, it's going to get us back. So, well, yeah, an overreaction for me tweeting out, we uh, we have gone back 10 years. No, I don't necessarily mean that, but it does feel that way because we've gone through so many bad coaches between Fisher and Vrabel now. Um, and to have someone as concrete as him, it's like, how are, are we going to go through another spell of five to 10 years where we're just trying to figure it out? And then we go through another GM hiring if, if Rand doesn't work out. And I mean, I'm already thinking about the draft. Like this draft now is going to be so important to the Titans, like behind the scenes, the players, the fans, because if, if they fuck this shit up, man, it, they're going to, it's going to be a mob mentality. It's just going to be who we blaming next. And then that's when I think things start spiraling. Um, I hate it. It's like the same thing we were telling Derek earlier. It's like, I wish I could just shake fucking Vrabel's hand. Sorry, I guess we're not. We we'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. <laughs> Forgot we're we're not on that pod. Um, but I do wish I could shake Mike Vrabel's hand because he's been such an influential member of the Titans community and just like a a a coach where as a fan that's had zero skin in the game as an actual player in the NFL which I am shocked he still didn't pick me up because I could have helped out in some ways. But but he seriously is is a same, like, credential member like Derek is or like you have been, Taylor, where, like, he made people want to be fans of the Tennessee Titans, even outside of, like, the core Titans fans. Like, you wanted to root for Mike Vrabel because he was a player's coach first and foremost. Like, all his and, team, his team embodies their head coach. Right? And, like, you, you, it's, like, the one clip I can just think of is him on the sidelines just fucking bully balling with y'all in warm-ups, just, like, getting after it. And, like, it's just, like, a coach you're ready to go to war for. And so the fact that, that Amy, whether it's Amy or Ran or whoever, is just fucking ridiculous to me that we got rid of, to me, the most crucial piece of this entire franchise. So I don't know who to blame at this point. Right now we're still in a mourning phase. And, um... We're, we'll host a funeral for Mike at some point around the shop once once I stop, you know, being down about it. But for right now, I'm just nervous. I don't know who they're going to bring in. I've heard whispers. Maybe the OC for uh, Houston. They're looking maybe to find an offensive-minded court or, uh, coach to, to fill the spot. I don't know what the next move is. I just never thought that we were going to get to this point. And the whole idea of us not taking at least the next few weeks to consider trading Vrabel to get some kind of capital behind it. And now we're sitting here, they're like, yeah, it was too complicated. It's like, hey, this is a $4 billion fucking industry that we're behind. And you think it, we can't take a few fucking weeks to figure this out and maybe make it at least work out for us and in the slightest way? It just seems stupid. But I mean, there's so many politics. And I agree with what you said more than anything that it does feel Game of Thrones-esque. There's something that we don't know yet that will come out in the next few months, I think, whether it's with Amy and Rand. But, yeah, it's a sad day. Sad day in Nashville. And we love Rabel. We love all the guys that have been here to build build up the city. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's always tighten up. It's always tighten up. No matter who's on the reins, it's tighten the fuck up because it's not about the coaches or the fucking GMs is about the heart of the city and the people that ride when it's two and thirteen or two and fourteen or three and thirteen, or when we're number one in the fucking ASC. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's have a moment of silence. I would love that. Thank you, Mike Brable. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. All right, guys. Enjoy enjoy the day. Leave comments. Sad day. Yeah. yeah. Bad day, bad day. Black Tuesday. Bad day, but good day. That when Michigan it's be Black Michigan. Tuesday. Thought we got through yesterday. Fuck signing kisses. <laughs> <laughs> it's a $4 billion fucking business.